one. All righty, guys. Welcome to another episode of Journey to the Pit. I'm Jim Collins. I'm your host for the night, and we have our two special guests tonight, Manuel Lafaro and Mario Silvermoon. I just want to make sure y'all guys can hear and see each other. Uh, Mario and Manuel, can y'all see each other? Yes, yes sir. Okay, y'all can hear each other, right? Yep. All right, so we here. We here. All right, well, listen, guys, let's go ahead and get this thing started, man. We had some technical difficulties. You know, it's not one of those multi-million dollar Fox News networks. So, you know what I mean? We got, we kind of work with the bootleg fashion, you know, the roadside assistance. <laughs> but listen, before we get this interview started with our two special guests, let me go ahead and just say the disclaimer, as we always do. All the information discussed in this interviews with these two uh, special guests tonight will be for historical, educational, entertainment purposes only. None of this information is intended for any illegal purposes, and all opinions are respected of the individual. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce our guest tonight. You know, I posted uh, on Monday, we had two special guests, Mario Silvermoon and Manuel Alfaro. Um, Y'all guys see their names also on the screen. It looks like we up and running. Everybody say we looking good. We sounding good. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like everything is good. So listen, guys. I introduce y'all. Um, y'all guys are not. This is not the first time on Journey to the Pit. Um, I greatly appreciate y'all guys coming back on for the next uh, next time around. Um, for all y'all guys who do not know, uh, Mario and Manuel were both two mentors in the Journey to the Pit 362 program, the first class. Um, so it's a great pleasure to have them back on. It's the first time they've been on since uh, the graduation of the class. Um, and we brought them back on tonight so they can talk about their experience. Um, they just competed in one of the very big uh, competition derbies out there in Mexico. They have a farm also in Mexico. So all the animals that competed was born, bred, and raised in Mexico. Uh, nothing was transported from the United States to Mexico. So kind of what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and let either one of them, whoever wanted to speak first, <clears throat> tell a special guest what was the name of the derby that y'all guys competed in. And then we're going to kind of walk through, you know, the start of the whole deal from the time y'all guys left the States and we'll walk it on through. So who wants to go ahead and um, talk about the name of the derby that y'all guys competed in? Go for it, Manuel. You want me to go? Well, thank you Jim, for, <laughs> for uh, having us on again. I'm glad we didn't scare you off the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great pleasure, man. <laughs> uh, and the derby, the derby they went to uh, was this past uh, Derby uh, Intercontinental in Guadalajara. Uh, mm -hmm. The group does, I want to say, like five major derbies, huge uh, entries, like 300 plus entries. Wow! Uh, all the best of Mexico uh, right. participate, and it's definitely. Where the cream of the crop grows, you know, uh, uh, right. show. It's a, right. uh, it's a pretty prestigious event, you know. Very, very few, uh, uh, very few at that high of a level, you know. So right. it's uh, it's right. tough. It's tough. It's not no walk in the park. It's the best of the best go. So it, it, it's a cool and, derby. And, and I know a lot of enchiladas. they're not enchiladas, huh? Yeah, it's not enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me this, man. How, how many days was the derby spread out over? Uh, it started on Wednesday to Sunday. Okay, it was Friday to Sun, Thursday to Sunday. Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are like the eliminations. And okay. Sunday is the championship round. Why not? Sunday is the championship yeah. round. So it's yeah. kind of a process of elimination, and whoever yeah. hasn't been eliminated, that's who competes on a Sunday. Yeah, Correct. yeah. So you have to you have to score three wins uh, or better to advance. Okay. Three, you could lose one, or draw one. But, okay. Uh, you you it goes by a point system. So uh, three points a win, one point a draw, zero points a loss. So you have to gotcha. accumulate a points through through certain rounds. Uh, so the first two for sure you show. And then the third mm -hmm. one, you gotta have, uh, you gotta have a uh, uh, minimum. I what is it? Three points, I believe, to to advance. And then to make it out, you gotta have three wins, minimum. Yeah. So nine points to advance. Okay, yeah. nine points. So is this a six cock, a nine cock? What is it? Seven. It's a seven. seven cock. Cock. It's a seven cock, huh? So it's mm -hmm. uh, so, for the uh, 
the first day, well, the day you're showing is four, and then the final, if you make it to the finals, it's three. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, obviously, with 300, they can't show all, everybody is not competing every single day, correct? No, no. no. There, there's about 70 participants a day, uh, roughly. So, mm -hmm. that's kind of the break it down. So, you get started somewhere around 10 uh, a.m., noon, and mm -hmm. go all the way up till midnight. They're extremely professional. That 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 uh that group is extremely okay. professional. They get everybody in and out fast. They call right. you up twenty minutes before, and they wake you up, and you get going. So it, it's a it's it's a well oiled machine they got going. Right. With the Derby Intercontinental. So how how, how did y'all guys like the facility? Oh, oh it's, man, it's the best. I mean, well, I've never been to Philippines, so I can't judge. I'm just judging by uh, you know my experience in Mexico, but. Right. I think, you know, well, I had a, you know, the man is pretty, pretty intense, pretty badass, yeah. I guess. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. You, right. Walk, you walk in there, you know, you're in the big leagues, man. It, it's a, it's a humongous arena, you know, huge, huge pit. It's, it's really huge, you know? Uh, so, so it's, 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 it's an experience for sure. Movie, um, Rookie of the year, Jim. They say that again. Have you ever seen that movie Rookie of the year? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Well, this is a scene where this kid, he's young, and, you know, he makes it to the big leagues. And right. he's just a kid. So when he walks into Chicago, the Cubs stadium, right? You know, that, that look he has in his face, that's the look we do when we walk in that pit. Right. <laughs> I know that's right. Y'all know y'all guys in the big leagues, huh? Yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First time well, was uh, was a very very interesting experience, you know, like one of a kind. So I've, many, never, I've never experienced that. How many times have y'all guys competed in this derby? Uh, three. Three times. Three times. Has it been back to back three three back to back years? Yes. Yeah. To the same event. To the same event, right? And mm -hmm. and tell me something. Um, and this probably is a crazy question, but I'm pretty sure um, y'all guys have learned something. Every time y'all guys have participated, huh? Absolutely. Each time. The, each time. The biggest growth has come from these these events. I think as Chicken Man, it really makes you elevate the game. Uh, yeah. To pay attention to the details, you know, you you really have to be an observer uh, uh, of of everything, you know, uh, and really get there because. The given is that there's good chickens. Regardless, there's good fowl. Everybody has it, you know. The difference right. is the, the, the details and the team and the preparation uh, to get into that point. But it's uh, it's definitely one of a kind. You know, we, we have learned a ton, you know, as far as it, it definitely makes you everything. A, it definitely makes you a better cocker all the way around. Right, you know? right, you right. You learn so much from it. You know, it's a... It, like I said, it's 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 a big, very big compared to when you're showing local. You know right. I mean? There's a lot of factors, a lot of challenges. Right. You know? right. Uh, the pressure. There's a lot of you know. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure because you sit there and uh, you know, you see all the the big time names. You know, you see right. all the big time names and everybody's present. And you know, it's definitely when you're a small time guys like us, right? We you you definitely. You definitely feel the pressure of all that, especially the first time going. But you know, we, you kind of work through it, and that was right. part of the learnings. You know, the the you know, the more you do it, the 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 easier it is to shake off that pressure, the anxiety of going, and then right. it kind of you start flowing, right? Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps. Whenever you go anywhere else, you never feel the same kind of. Pressure. <laughs> it, it's so much; it gets so high right. there. Right. Wherever you go, somewhere else, and it's like. A walk in the park, you know, it's right. not so much pressure, right. it's not so much adrenaline. So, right. at least from my experience, is how it's been, you know, first time I was about to pass out, you know, <laughs> you were so, you so stressed out, huh? Yeah. And, and you, then, you know, once you break that seal, <laughs> then it kind of evens out, then you kind of, you know, right. re, you gather yourself again, compose it, and go, you know, but it, right. it's a, definitely a one of a kind of experience. Yeah, especially so Mario, how was it for you? Man, especially when it's your like your own bird. So so I handled the day before we showed for this right. entry. Right. And I was cool. You know, I told Manny I walked in, I was like, 
man is like, cool, man. Like that, you can break the ice. So I walked in, everything was cool, you know, right. pit it, did my thing, walked out, everything was good. The next day when the, it was our birds, shit, <laughs> them, um, anxiety was through the roof. I was like, what's going on? It's just our own birds, you know? Yeah. And it's other people's birds. I mean, yeah, you do your best you can, but it's not that same feeling. Right. When you're going to, you Because well, you know, the, the amount of effort that goes into it, you know, from, from, from the get go. I think that's the difference, right? You, you, there's a lot invested in, in uh, uh, we, everybody wants to do good, you know? Everybody wants to go right. and show out, so. Well, let, let me ask y'all guys this, and I know this is probably a, bi a very biased question. Uh, actually, before that, I'm going to ask you, you know, with y'all guys being, you know, y'all consider yourself smaller time breeders, you know, y'all, for example, you know, so the audience know, like, how many birds y'all guys typically breed a year? Two, three hundred, or? Yeah, I'd say the ballpark, you know, two, two, three hundred. Uh, this year, we're going to ramp it up here and, and mm -hmm. probably... Get, get a little higher there, but yeah, two, three hundred between the both of us. We it's more than okay. we, you know, it's, it's what we can handle and and right. and be consistent, you know, right? Because right. nothing, nothing really leaves, it stays in house. So we it's uh, it, it's what we could handle, you know, just uh, right. doing the work ourselves. No, I totally understand, yeah, because you, yeah, you know, and, and I ask that question to give guys perspectives that, you know, y'all guys are smaller breeders, but y'all guys are still out there competing against the best in the world or the best in the South America, or however you want to say. I would say in the world because people come from all over to compete there. That they, it is, you know, uh, you know, people that had, they, it's a lot of people that have farms from all over the world that come there. So you have competition from all over the world. You know, with y'all guys being smaller breeders, you know, did y'all ever attend this event prior to ever competing in it? <laughs> As a, we did well, it. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've always had that dream, you know, but when, yeah. it, when it came true, it's like we learned so much. Like, for example, you're talking about only breeding two to 300 birds, you know, right. after the first participation, right. you know, it came down to selection. Mm -hmm. So right. it came down to calling hard, like regardless, right. you know. Right. When you go to say, you know, local pits, whatever, or just in general, you know, local, you know, no big derbies, pits, just like not like right. another really big derby, right? Exactly. You know, I've heard friends where they're, you know, putting up a show and they're like, okay, well, this guy's good, but if they let him do this, it's game over. Or if right. they do this, it's game over. See, we don't have time for that type. You know, either they're aces or they're not. Mm. That's know? right. That's so right. We gotta treat everything the same. If we're going to a five hundred dollar derby, right? You know, and we're going to a two thousand dollar derby, doesn't right. matter. They have to be aces, right. regardless. They have so, to be. Aces. So, so, so it, it really changed y'all guys. Team. So, so basically, one of the biggest things y'all had to adjust is y'all culling. You know, y'all selection. You know, because you knew this not no local place in Mexico that we just go into a local pit in Mexico and compete in there. We go yeah. with the heavy hitters. So we need to make sure uh, we kind of have to make some adjustments because basically what you're saying is, you know, sometime with the local places in Mexico, you can say, oh, if the bird do this, then, you know, I, we can get with him. If he do a little of this, then we can use him. But when you go there, you're like, no, he need to do it all. If he can't do it all, he ain't, he ain't taking a trip. Period. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, no mistakes. No mistakes. Uh, and, mistakes. And I think another another thing that really helped us during this was that we're kind of naive to how big and all that stuff it was, you know. So mm -hmm. we didn't really we hadn't scaled it, right? Can we do it? Mm -hmm. It was like we can do it, you know. We can right. compete, and so right. there was never a doubt of can we do it. It was more of like right. how do we get there. You know, how do we get there? Like we were a little bit naive to see how big. If we would probably went there first, we would have been like, ah, maybe sit back, you know, because it's intimidating. Right. But I think since right. we just kind of, we just said, we're, we're game, let's do it, you know, it was, yeah. uh, it, it made a difference, you know, it made a difference. And I think uh, the first year we went, it showed that we can compete, you know, we have right. what it takes. We just got to get organized enough and get the right guys around us uh, for us to be successful. And I think. Good birds, like I said, everybody has them. Everybody has extremely good file, healthy, everything. You know, right. the team, the organization. I think that that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. It's having the, the guys there to set and, you up and, what makes, and then everything going smooth. And what makes it difficult, well, not difficult, but more challenging for us, Jim, that 
we do everything from raising to conditioning to right. going out there. Right. You know, not, Traveling, not down feeding, talking. I'm everything. not down talking any high, you know, commercial right. breeders or anything like that, but right. 90% of them send their birds out there and all they do is just go there, sit in a chair and watch, watch everybody else do the thing with their birds. You know, right. we, you know, we do everything. We go, we, you know, we don't have time to sit there and and just watch. So y'all, y'all got to be hands on, on on many many different aspects. You exactly. know, many different aspects. So so it basically, takes well, it takes a teamwork, right? So and basically, teamwork. you know, from from what I'm hearing is just participating, regardless of how y'all guys did in the in the derby. Just participating actually made y'all guys step y'all guys game up as far as on selection, calling, and everything else. So from derby number one that y'all competed in, it automatically affected y'all guys breeding program. Because yeah. from that experience, first experience, you it set a whole new standard on your yard time. Yeah. Cause you have you have a bar, right? And so we know, okay, this is this is this is the limit here, right here. It has to be here or above, you know. So it made right. us better chicken man in general, especially when you come back. You know, right. You come right. back with a with, with you know wealth of knowledge, uh, a troubleshooting. You become a it, a, it a, a, a master at troubleshooting, you know. So especially when selecting like this one time, this last time, I'm sorry, you know, we sparred a couple birds and we're like, okay, these can cut it. But then right. you say the third, fourth spar, here comes a monster. And we're like, okay, we need all of these, like all of them have to be. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, the other birds were like, we're, like they were above average. They yeah. were basically above average. So you're like, oh, they good. You know, in a local pit in Mexico, I can win with these things all day long. But not with, not at that, not with that. You know, at that level, at that. Mommies, go back upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I had a special oh, no, guest come on that wasn't invited, huh? <laughs> she came in a little early. A little early, right? Yeah. So, so basically what I'm hearing, and I think, you know, it's extremely important, and I don't want to be, be redundant on this, but I think the, these points right here are extremely important because to me, it defines and confirms regardless of how well you do when you travel. When you go out there and compete with the best, your game – will automatically be elevated, even subconsciously. You don't even realize it. You will start to look at your bird in a whole different fashion, especially when you see other people's birds compete. Now, again, we all know everybody got good genetics. We know everybody got good health. So the game is not about brew pin. The game is not about 362 on the health side. The game is about now, not only the last three, but how do I put all these logistics together, combinations together, adapt to what you've seen as far as not yesterday, but what you've seen last fight? You know, basically, yep, Joe, you know, last fight, he's like, okay, we need to make some adjustments. This is not yeah. even another day. It's yeah. actually this, the next fight you automatically almost going back like to the drawing board. I mean, yeah. would that be fair to say? I, I believe that's fair because you also have a humongous gap, right? You're talking about you can go at 10, you can go at 1, you can go at 2 p.m., you can go at 4, 6, 8 p.m., and then you can go again at midnight. So it really makes you a better feeder because you got to hold embers on, on point, you know, and, right. and, and, and again, stay on those details. Dump them out however, hour, every two hours, however it is that, that the person does it, and and stay on them and make sure that their moisture is good, that, you know, right. that, that everybody's right. happy. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's a, it's a marathon for sure. You know, it's, it's not, definitely it's, a marathon. Yeah. yeah. Especially because it's cold out here and it's 80, Hot. 80 out there. Yeah. Right. It's a drastic right. change. A drastic change, yeah, so yeah, right? It, it's it's a drastic change, and, and and like I say, so and and I and I say that because again, there's certain things about this experience that I think that a lot of people, if they're really paying attention, they can take a lot from. You know, it's a lot of lessons. A lot of, to me, I call them jewels. It's a lot of jewels from this experience that y'all guys learn. So hmm. my question is this: Obviously, y'all guys had the dream, y'all had the confidence. You know, and y'all just said, you know, we want it. We're going to do it. You know, we don't have a thousand birds. You know, our names are not locked in history. 
you know, we're not well known or anything like that. But you guys know that from what y'all guys are reading, health was superior. Your brew pins, based on y'all guys' standard, was excellent. So you did, you guys felt there's no reason that we can't compete. Absolutely. Absolutely. So y'all just went again and said, let's do it. It, it was just a matter of, of getting of, of getting it going, you know. Like once we brainstorm and sat down and said, well, we got to give it a shot, you know. We can't just go around and say, oh, well, we could have, you know. Like, right. There's no room for that in, in, in the way we kind of move, both of us. Like, right. There's nothing left to, oh, we should have or we could have. We just go and right. let's do it. And, and we learned a ton of on the way, you know. It, it, it's something that you got to pull the trigger. If you sit there thinking about, I'm going to do it, maybe I am, and you'll never go. You just got to do it and, and, and yeah, take it, it, take it, you know. You have, you have to you know. I, right. I, I totally agree with you guys. There's no possible way y'all guys can have learned what y'all guys have learned without the experience. If y'all guys was not there, they, I don't care how many books you read. I don't care who your mentor is. Exactly. I don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, if you do not take that trip, you know, and, and, and again, even on, on a local level, whatever the case is, it, it's kind of like when I used to race. We used to always call these some guys one track kings. Like they were like a master at one track. They were like yeah. so hard to beat, right? But, but you would have these pros that traveled throughout the world, like signed sponsored drivers that got sent all over the world. They would come there and destroy them. And you'd be like, dude, how does they beat the one track king? But let me tell you what one of the pros, he was a world champion, told me. He said, listen, when you travel, you learn stuff that you would never learn at your home track. So always remember that. So regardless of how you place when you travel, the point is not where you place. The point is what you have learned through that experience. So y'all guys knew y'all guys had the brew pin. Y'all knew y'all guys had that had the help. But at the end of the day, y'all had to put that to a true test. And what better state to do it than to test it against the elite? Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. It, and that's where we've always been like that, where it's like, if we're going to fail, it's going to be big. You know, it's going to be big. It's going to be at as high a level as we can go. Like, we can go get whipped by a small or whatever guy, which maybe he has just as good, but I prefer to do it at the highest level. So then we have a good measuring stick to go from there. You know, hey, let's, well, this is how we have to adjust or, you know, be, and that's be true. The way that's the only way you're going to know what you have, what you're breeding, you know? Right. You might buy birds, yeah, from a guy that's competing, you know, but right. it, it's, that's him, you know, it's his, his, how do you say, his skills. You got to test right. your skills, what you have, you know what I mean? You exactly. Got the birds, so you got to try right. what you have, you got to, you know what I mean? Don't expect that's, the same results if you're not doing that, you know, taking that extra leap. That's you know? extremely valid point that you said that. And, and, and for two parts, that's a two-part point. One point is, like you say, you're, you're buying it from a successful breeder that is competing. So you know what you're buying is able to compete, right? But it does not mean just because you go there, you buy that trio that came out of that same brew pin. It does not mean you won't be able to get those same type of results that that guy did. And it ain't because of the lack of brew pin. And it might not be because of the lack of health. It might be because you didn't get put all those pieces together and make them sync up the right way. And that's what you learn when you get out there and compete. Because you, you you actually forced to learn. You forced yeah. to learn how to how to mend that mend that puzzle together that you could never do if you don't go and do it. Exactly. And, and, and that brute pin, you know, it, it, it's critical. But a lot of times, you know. Most guys don't know what to do with it, you know, and blame the right. breeder. So, you right. know, you can have $10,000 chickens, but if you don't really, if you can't help them, then they're going to be $1 chickens or free chickens, flea market chickens. So, right. And that's uh, a good point, you know, Manuel's bringing up because this is the another reason why, you know, we decided to go on our own. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, a lot of guys just send out the birds and they pay people to do everything for them. And right. at the end of the day, if something went wrong, they start pointing fingers. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, right. the, the feeder starts pointing fingers that the chickens ain't no good. The breeder starts pointing fingers that the feeder was no good. And <laughs> that's one thing. It's never ending. Like, 
we don't like excuses. There's no excuses. You know what I mean? You right. could, if you know, you got your ass whooped, you got your ass whooped regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. don't blame anybody. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason, another of the reasons I mean that me and Manuel decide to do everything ourselves because there's nobody to blame but us. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's because right. we can't go there and point the finger at, and that just resolves 90% of the issues, right? So if we know we were off, then you eat it, right? And as a feeder, if you're off, then you got to take that because that's uh, uh, constructive criticism, right? Or, or constructive right. Uh, stuff that we got to take and, and utilize that in the next one, you know? Right. And, so, and basically the verse that y'all guys use was stuff that y'all guys bred yourself, correct? Yeah. Correct. So that makes y'all. It has to make y'all very proud. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Even even Absolutely. then, Jim, like we don't say you don't do good. Um, people will start trying to criticize. You know, like oh, oh they yeah. went over there and they got handled. They you know they they did this and they, you know it didn't work out. But I'm gonna say 99 percent of those people never even competed or even traveled out of their own town. But yeah. they're just right. You know what I mean? That's right. No, 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 that's exactly right. And that's the reason why I want to bring up some of these points. Because, again, they want track kings. You know what yeah. I mean? If they locally in Mexico, they run around Mexico in the same area, they're the master the art of that area, but you send them to another track, and it's almost like an amateur. And then they got 99,000 excuses of why it didn't work. But I tell them, one of the big reasons why it didn't work is because you didn't travel. That's why it didn't work. And the reason why you didn't know how to feed for this or adjust to that or adjust to this, because you never traveled. Now, I'm not saying it's for each his own. You know, everybody doesn't have the desire to travel. My whole point is to don't criticize people who do travel, who's constantly pushing the envelope, who's constantly pushing their self. And when they don't have the desired results, you try to just, you know, down talk them and throw them under the bus, basically saying, y'all guys traveled all that way. Y'all went 3,000 miles away and y'all guys smashed. He like, yeah. okay, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I come back <laughs> to the local local place in Mexico, I will smash you there from something that I learned when I travel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either be you know, I have learned, even, you know, from out. Even yeah. even the, uh, traveling, hauling birds is different than flying them. Absolutely. You, know, you can fly <laughs> in two hours, right? You can haul right. in 15 hours, and there's still a big difference. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, you just you just flew him two hours. Yeah, but that flight right there, it, you know what I mean? Well, well, no, you know, two hours, you know how far you can go? Yeah. Two hours in an airplane? It ain't like you on two hours in a car. You ain't in the same state. You know, <laughs> you in a whole nother climate. You you closer to the equator. I mean, so in two hours in an airplane, depending on which direction you fly, it's gonna be a long way. It's gonna be completely different. I mean. And we know pressure, how to do you know, the pressure is different. The altitude for the roosters is different. You know, even right. for one that goes onto the airplane, you get there and you're like, uh oh, you know, you get a little tired. Right. And, right. and, you know, we have to assume that those animals are doing the same thing. So, how do you adjust? How do you make sure that they can, you know, uh, uh, pick that back yeah. up? You know, get, get everything yeah, they right. need. So, there's definitely a fine line between, you know, uh, uh, all of that. You know, and right. we're, we're still working on it, you know, but. Right. Well, we're it's going to be a whole, whole process. You're going to always work yeah. on it because ain't nobody winning every year. You know no, what I mean? No. Ain't nobody winning every year. And I don't care if you've been down here for 10 years straight. It ain't never going to be the same. No, no year is the same as the last year. Every and it's too tough. Different. There's too many factors. It, exactly. And that's, that's the key right there is too many factors. That's yeah. why they never be the same. Even, first of all, you ain't never going to bring the same birds. That's right. They're going to change the whole game. Because you're not yeah, even bringing exactly. the same identical birds. You know what I mean? So so let's talk a little bit about, you know, y'all guys making this thing happen. So y'all fly out, what, on Wednesday and head down there? or uh, this, this time we flew out on a Thursday. Yeah. Flew out on a Thursday. So y'all y'all team is down there. The birds down there. You know, what, 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 is, what are some of the first things that y'all guys do once y'all get down there? And and shout out to Christian Mario's cousin, right? He he goes out the day before Wednesday and gets everything set up for us: the house, the the boxes, the rest stalls, the roost poles, the pens, the, the mats, everything, pay. everything that's required, the cars, all that stuff that he needs. And he gets all that stuff set up, and several other guys too. They help us out, you know. But he's really the one that goes the day out before and 
and gets everything set up so we can just get to a house and just 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 go from one point to another put them out and, and let them rest as soon as possible you know okay. but, but yeah, so, so that's, that's what I mean by, mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead. teamwork you know because if if my cousin don't do stuff like that it makes it even more of a challenge for us you know mm-hmm. we can't get there and then go take care of all those stuff you know go get this go get the boxes go you know everything we need Imagine right. we'll be running around all day, poor birds. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They won't even have time to settle in. So that's right. That's right. My, co- my yeah. cousin does a big part, you know, in yeah. taking care of all that stuff for us. So, you know, it, 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 and, and I think that's brother. the key right there: getting prepared, you know, from the get go right. and having a clear plan. I think uh, you'll save yourself a heartache and a headache and all that other aches. If uh, a wallet ache, also if uh, if you can prepare before and. Right. Uh, and really get ahead of it. And I think like from the years past, we learned that, you know, if we get there a little bit early, mm-hmm. uh, we have an opportunity to get set up in case we have to change anything, you know, and we've right. had to change things, you know, sometimes it's just kind of last minute and we have to adjust, you know, we adjust to the movement and, and so and get there. So, I, I mean, I guess, you know, to answer your question, once we get there, we have the place ready and stuff like that. We take them out. You know, some nice grass and stuff. Let them relax where it's not, uh, it's not closed in. You know, out in the right. open. But, you know, right. to keep, you know, just try to make them feel comfortable. You know, right. like home. first day, yeah. first day they're out of it. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. they're they're comfortable, but they're they're like obviously tired. You know, from the flight and stuff right. like that. Right. So, you know, Manuel settles them in. You know, gives them their feed, water, whatever they need. You know, right. make them feel comfortable. Right. The following day, which is Friday. That's when you see a difference after the rest, because you okay. rest pretty early. Then you know okay. Friday is when you start noticing like, okay, here we go, you know. And then obviously, you yeah. Well, they're you know you gotta hydrate them once they get there because they're a little bit flat, you know. So once right. they get there, you gotta you know hydrate the roosters, get them in good spirits, uh, uh, get a little moisture, you know. You know they start pushing out all that feed and they start really, really. Uh, uh, you know, really coming on. So right. Friday, that's kind of, you take them out in the morning and you're looking at almost totally different animals, you know. They're cutting wings, they're acting good, they're talking, and it's, uh, you know, they really start, you know, absorbing all of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it makes quite a difference. And for us, you know, whatever they rest in here, right, or in our, in our, in our farm, Whatever they're resting in, they rest in the same thing where they were going. So it's important to have the same atmosphere. Similarity. Yeah. Right. So same roost poles, same boxes, similar smells, you know, room, Water. getting used to it, all that stuff. So, you know, and all, all that we, we so plan ahead. Kind of for example, that kind of know. differs down on, a, on the effect of, 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 uh, you know, it's not a drastic, it's not as drastic. Like you said, they on the same roost pose, they in the same boxes. All that stuff, again, maybe is overlooked, you know, by a lot of people. But it makes a lot, I mean, it's, it's a system, I mean, it's a method, a reasoning behind that. You guys are just trying to minimize the, minimize the distress that they'll have if they have to try to like, you know, what's this roost pole? What's the smell? This ain't the box I'm using. They're going to be focused on so much of that. They can't even get a good night's sleep versus, you know, being on the same roof pole, smelling their own poop, you know, in a same box. And yeah, I think that makes a big difference on this on a mental aspect, psychological aspect, because that is a huge part of preparation, too, is a psychological aspect that a lot of people do not talk about. Yeah. Even, that a- water, Jim, even that simple as the water, Jim, even as simple as the water, you know, uh, we found out there's Costco out there. So we get them used to the Costco water here. So when we go over there, we buy Costco water. It's the same water. It's not. Right. Can you say we have, you know, tap water here and then we give them. You yeah. know, That's Costco right. And we know how it is. Here, but you can travel throughout this country here and get all. The, I mean, you you turn on the faucet like, oh, the way that water smells, I don't even want to drink that. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? <laughs> so, no, that's exactly right. So that's one of the things that y'all guys do is try to minimize the distress by keeping their surroundings as familiar as possible. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and I, you know, I, I, 
maybe it, it maybe it's anecdotal, but you know, it, it makes a difference. It's just like when you go sleep at a hotel, right? It's it, not your bed. It, it makes a difference. I you can't know? see how it. I, my personal opinion, yeah. it has to make a difference. Yeah, I, 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 we think it does, you know, and it has worked for us in the past where, you know, I, we had one, uh, one time where the derby went long and they had to shut it down. So, you know, we didn't get to show the third one. Uh, mm -hmm. It was four in the morning. I had to run to the hotel. So what I did is we hauled the rooster to the hotel. I put the seats up on the truck. Uh, I opened up the box. I put his roost pole. I fed him out before all that, you know, put his roost pole on them, and I rested that rooster in the back of the truck, inside the truck. Yeah. Next right. day, we come back, we show it was our fastest one. So, like, wow. he was used to it. He didn't. Re it wasn't really too extreme for him because he's used to his box. But I, right. I'm pretty sure if we would have put him in a new place, he would have probably freaked out, especially oh, yeah. oh, or even in the first shot. Him, yeah, you know, even if we would have taken him with the other group, we would have to. We would have to wake here. up the other guys. Yeah. You know? Yep. And that would have been right. over. You know what I mean? So it's a little That's thing right. Like that. And we rolled the dice on it. We didn't know how that was going to work. You know, that was just, it right. just panned out for us. It worked out, you know, but, you know, we had our, we had our, our box. They already knew the box. They're already comfortable. So I figured, well, it's the easiest thing. He's not going to know that he's inside of a truck. Yeah. You know? That's right. Because he's That's still right. sleeping in the same place. No biggie. Right. Yeah. So, so, so guys, tell me this. You know, y'all guys got y'all team down there. Y'all guys are, are making adjustments, analyzing, you know, the last fight, trying to make adjustments for the next one. And and, and, and now that I'm, I'm listening, you know, how do you hold these roosters on when you do not know or do y'all guys know when the next when your fight's going to be? You won't know until the final round, until the last fight of that round. Yeah. Then they do the drawing because it's not computer match. So they'll do it again. Gotcha. And it, it, you wouldn't even know. Actually, you wouldn't even know the time. That you, you know, it'll say, um, say the thirtieth fight. So you gotta kind of predict yourself. Kind of guess, how, yeah, how two or three hours. So you you won't know if it's you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. You just say say the drawing's at ten. So right. we'll say we're like the twentieth fight. We're like okay, we kind of see how the first three four fights go, and we kind of right. add all that together. And okay, we're gonna be showing like maybe in four hours. Because they right. can draw all the first four, and then you're like, "Uh oh, well, how are we gonna? How are we gonna gauge this? You know?" But time uh, sometimes they go really fast. That's right. Or, you know, they're in and out, and up there, once you, I want to say, once you're like six, seven fights out, they call you up, wake up, and then five fights out, they call you to 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 get into the booth to start tying. So it, okay. you know, it's it's uh, it's in and out, in and out, you know, revolving mm -hmm. constantly. So mm -hmm. it's uh. And everything's legit. They call you to wake up the bird, you know, after they wake you wake it up. Um, say what, ten minutes after you go, you know, to hear your bird and they even have a uh, a judge or ref, whatever you want to call it, you know, measuring the weapons. That's you know, great. Them. So everything's legit, you know. Right. And you have to heal them right there. You don't go nowhere right. else like you know, other local places were like, okay, you measure and then you go and go to your own place. You don't know if the other guy's putting up uh, uh, that's a right. That's, <laughs> you know? that's right. No, that's exactly right. That's right. You, you're not going to leave their site. They're going to check it and then you're going to step in a box. It ain't no, okay, I'm going to check it and then you go back to your cock house and then, you know, come on in here after you tie it out. Like, nah, that could be something totally different on there. Yeah. You know, so no, I, I completely understand that. And I guess, you know, to me, it allows you with it with, it, with an operation like that. It allows you to make an honest judgment on your performance and the bird's performance because you know it's an even playing field. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's as even as you can get. You know, the check bands, everything, and you know you measure everything, and it's off to the races. So, so the game is all about experience and trying to put the best combination together which is not always done by the person with the most experience. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It's all about just trying to pay a lot of attention to detail, trying to pay attention to all these moving parts that y'all guys have to deal with and uh, and trying to make the best decision pretty much on the fly, right? I mean, y'all kind of yeah. making a decision right there. Well, yeah, because you would like to uh, predict, right, like what's going to happen next, but it's so – it's just – it, it's not that easy, you know. It, 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 there's just so many things flying at you. And I'm sure anybody that's gone it will attest to that, that there's just so much to adjust. Like, 
uh, one of the years, it rained three weeks here, and over there it was hot, 90 degrees, right? Right. I didn't know that was going to happen. We had to all adjust to those to the scenario. Right. So every right. every day is different, you know? Like right. this year, everything was extremely nice weather, so everybody was on, you know? Everybody. The extreme right. weather makes it a little bit more difficult to – to be even across the board, you know, so everybody was on this year. It was, it was extremely tough. Yeah. It was extremely tough. Huh? Yeah, extremely tough. Yeah. Man, there were, <laughs> there was there were flies, man. <laughs> in and out, in and out. There, it was, it's probably, yeah. probably the toughest we've seen it, you know, compared to the last two years. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was, it was tough. It, it's because it was a perfect storm, you know, like the weather was like 75, 70 degrees. So there's very little need for trailers and other stuff. So it's perfect. For, it's even for everybody, you know. And right. last year it was extreme. It was 95 degrees. So, you know, it, there's some big adjustments you have to do because you know, this area is not uh, air conditioned and none of that right. stuff. So you got to right. you got to make sure everybody's cool, stays cool, and right. uh, it's a good humidity and all that stuff and moisture. And so it, it uh. It will complicate things. Yeah, this year was was uh, was pretty nice. You know, it was it was it was good weather. It was a very ideal situation for y'all, Absolutely. and that's like one element we don't have to deal with or work on. We we can just focus on all these other elements. So tell me this. You know, I know y'all guys got to be extremely happy for three years in a row. Y'all guys are going there. Y'all competing um, with your own birds that y'all have bred and and, and stuff. So I know that got to be a very very good feeling. Um, and then y'all guys were saying that every year y'all guys game pretty much gets stepped up because obviously the competition ain't getting no easier. It's, no. it's getting, yeah, it's getting, it's, it's getting yeah. harder. It's getting tougher and tougher every year. So would it be fair to say, you know, how many years do you think it added in experience? Like every time y'all guys went to one of those shows, like went to, and, and this is what I mean. To, mm-hmm. to make sense of the question. When I would travel to a track and you would go through all these dilemmas and all this kind of stuff, when you would come back, you would be able to compete like you were doing it for three extra years that you really wasn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you gained three years of experience just from that one experience. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, with y'all guys going three years in a row, not only did it elevate, you know, how y'all guys analyze and chose the birds not only for the ones that will be performing, but also on the brood pins. Um, but how did it affect y'all guys as far as the final days of preparing? It, 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 you know, are y'all guys taking lessons from what y'all learned the last year, you know, the year prior and said, you know what, we didn't deal with the 95 degree weather, but it is some things I did that worked the last time that we can use in this, in this show at this time. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think uh, we definitely we definitely broke it all down and analyzed uh, the situations, you know, and mm-hmm. said, okay, last year this worked for us, right? Right. And, and these things didn't. And and also we have a clear view of, like, what to expect. A clear right. view because we're never going to be 100, right? But we had a, a better view of what, what, what needed to get done in order for us to have a little bit more success, you know? Right. Uh, and maybe not getting so ahead of ourselves. Uh, when, I'll speak for myself, right? When feeding, right? Right. Because when you're in something that's a little shorter, uh, you want them empty right off the bat, right, right off the gate. But here, right. you know, we're playing the long game. Uh, you have to work to get there, you know, slowly. Right. Because you don't have to draw them out right away, you know? Right. You, if you got two hours, then you get them there in two hours. If, if, if right. you got 30 minutes, well. You know, then keep them, you know, point them or, or uh, uh, you know, peck them or whatever it is that you need to do to keep them on. So right. I think in there, it did give us a crash course because it was, it was uh, long, you know, long and drawn out. And it was definitely a crash course. Year, year wise, I would say the first year we probably gained probably, probably a handful of experience, of, a handful of years of experience <laughs> for sure. Not, not only that, Jim, it's like um, you, you gain confidence, you know, yeah. not, That's in a, right. not in a cocky way, you know, but. You have confidence in your birds and yourself, you know. Right. It, it's just one of those, uh, say, a uh, kid playing, uh, uh, say, baseball, and he's like right. a little wreck, you know, a little wreck ball, you know, recreation area. Mm-hmm. And then 
he gets scouted to a traveling team. You know, right. after he gets out of that traveling team and he go, and he ever goes back to travel, I mean, to the rec ball, you know right. how much confidence that kid's going to have? The level yep. is like to the roof, you know? And exactly. You confidence, you do better. You know, that's right. Yourself. And that's, I'm just trying to use that as an example. Of like these yep. travels, you know, these, you know, traveling the birds is, you know, participating in, in big events, you know, right. helps us out a lot, you know? And, yeah. and, uh, a lot of experience, obviously, right. you know, going through that. So, and, I mean. And, you know, and, and it's, it's things like that that I want. And, it, you know, it's just certain parts of this interview. And the reason why I want to bring y'all guys on, because, again, your guys are not rich. your guys are not famous. You know, y'all don't have a big farm. And, and, I, and I wanted to bring y'all guys on because, look, the backbone of the sport are really the smaller breeders, you know. You're not going to have, for every one commercial breeder, you probably got a 1,000 or more. You probably got, you know, 5,000 small breeders. Yeah. So I think it's very important, and the reason why I wanted y'all guys to come on, and so, again, goes back to that confidence thing that you just said, Mario. You know, I think the smaller breeders need to understand that they can do it. It can be done, um, and they should work towards that if that's their goal. You know, if that's their goal. But I want y'all guys to talk about the benefits the benefits that you gain from taking that gamble. And don't go there thinking I'm going to come back with a trophy again. Set your set the goal high. But I yeah. think the, the, the key is, is go there saying, I need to learn as much as I can learn on this trip. You know, if I get a trophy, thank God I got a trophy. But at the end of the day, it's not even a trophy, but it's what did I learn in obtaining, working up towards that trophy. You know, because you can look at it from a whole different perspective and say, man, we didn't win. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Or you can come back and say, hey, I learned a lot, man. Next time I'm going to do this, I probably shouldn't have did that. You know what I'm saying? Be very kind of critical you know, yeah. to yourself because, like you say, Mario, that's when that, that confidence get really built. Like, you know what? When I go again, and you'll probably end up dealing with 20 new problems. You know what I'm saying? When you master the 20 yeah, old absolutely. <laughs> you master absolutely. the 20 old when you show up next time, those ain't even those ain't need, even a, 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 a problem at that time, like the weather. You know, I went last time, it was 95 degrees. You know, so you prepare your mind. <laughs> right, exactly. But then you go there this time, the, the weather is ideal. So it's like, yeah. well, you know what? So it's kind of like, again, I just hope that a lot of the smaller breeders watching this understand that all these things are possible, not only for y'all guys, but for guys like yourself. You know, again, guys like yourself is the next generation. Y'all the future generation. Y'all not 65 years old. Y'all not 70 years old. Y'all guys are young. Y'all breeding your own birds. You know, y'all really extreme on y'all 362 because y'all know how important it is. And y'all going out there and y'all competing regardless of who criticizes or who thinks that y'all shouldn't even be at that level. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of guys that look at y'all and say, man, y'all shouldn't even be going over there. Y'all not on that level, Mario and Manuel. You know, what y'all doing going over there? Y'all not at that level. Y'all trying to go in with the big boys. But hey, if you want to be a big boy, you got to go play with the big boys. I mean, that's the way I look at it. That's the and only there's way. Time, there's time, there's time, I mean, what I'm trying to say is like, for example, we won a, a local derby before we left, right? Right. Um, but you don't see us posting it or bragging about it. And right. you know why? Because we don't sell chickens. You know, people right. that do that because they want to sell their, their chickens. Right. You know, that comes down to what you're saying that, oh, I don't know why they're going over there. You know, we could right. post up a lot of, you know, our successful wins, but we don't, we don't do it. You know what I mean? Right. For that reason, you know. But again, it's Facebook, you know? Right. You know That's how Facebook right. people, people want to see trophies they want to see right. you know w they want to see all the flag i mean that no without a doubt and, and again guys i know exactly what you're talking about because a lot of guys get on me because you know i'm i don't highlight i don't i'm not all about highlighting them last three and them trophies and i'm not yeah. saying i'm anti trophy but y'all guys know where i stand on that because i know that's not the backbone of the sport and you know you'll see a trophy here and there but then when you look at how many shows they went to you ain't getting those things every time you go there. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, you know, again, I think, you know, and I'm always wanting to go back to that 360 because that's the foundation of the sport. 
The 362, that's when you how you decide on what you're going to breed, decide on what you're going to call, decide on what you want to feed, how you want to feed. All of that, all of that is the backbone of the sport and what keep these birds going generation after generation. And I think sometime, and the reason why I'm trying to drive this point home, because I personally feel that a lot of guys come into the sport with the wrong perception, you know, and they put they put their happiness based based on that destination and they have no very little enjoyment up to that destination and then when they don't get that trophy man they get demoralized and you know what i'm saying it's just like man you know then they start blaming everybody i ain't got no chickens from that guy no more and dude it wasn't none of that dude i'm just saying you overlooking the most important aspect of it is that 362 dude you know what i'm saying if you Exactly. Be extreme on that. If you become obsessed with that 362, you can almost teach yourself the last three days yeah. almost on your own. But if all you're doing is throwing worm pills, feed, and water, you ain't gonna really know that them birds at the last that three that them last three. You know what I'm saying? When you get extreme and personal with those birds on that 362, when them last three come. You know how many times a day that bird poop. You know exactly what his poop should look like. You know exactly what he should feel like. That's the point I'm trying to make. You know what I'm saying? I'm not anti-trophy, anti-that. I'm I'm more focused on, guys, y'all missing the point. Y'all forgetting about the journey. If you become obsessed with that 362, it's almost like you work with somebody every single day. You work with him, you live with him, and all that. You know if, if he gets in the car, you take him to work. You know what I'm saying? He's quiet. You like, what's going on, bro? Like, you yeah. know, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You like, you quiet this morning. You usually talking, you usually dance, you usually that's the same thing with the birds. What is it? Exactly. What, what did I get? Man, I don't understand why guys attack me on this. I can drive this point home. If you out there, and I'm not saying if you got 500, you can get personal with 500. Yo, pick 10 or 20 or 30 like y'all guys were doing. Y'all run through like, ah, you know, he's a superhero day one and day two, but we just brought a monster out here, so those superheroes ain't going to do it. Well, that's what happens when you get personal. Now, you don't, y'all don't, don't guys don't know that with all 300 of y'all birds, but y'all do know that with about 50 of them. Yeah. Well, and, and we, you know, we have a routine set in place, right? And selection process and doing all that stuff. But right. what you say is the base, you know? And just like everything else, you got to have a good foundation. Those 362 yeah. are the foundation, you know? And all of it is important, but the meat and potatoes is the 362, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. if you have that locked in, you, you, you're good. You're pretty just, much good to go. It's just as good as anybody yeah. else's. Yeah. Put it this you're, way. You're going to maximize that brew pen then. If you got yep. that 362 in order, then all that's going to be left to is that, that brood pin, them genetics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and we, we don't got control of what chromosomes or what Y and X they, they receive. Only thing we know is, I know these 362, this is what I'm going to put together for you. You know, and then your genetics yeah. going to have to do the rest. And, and you put in what you get it, right? Like, you, you, you it's all about time investing. You know? 362, right. you got to invest that time. That's and, right. And, and, and the rest of it follows invest. suit. You yeah. only invest 150, 162. That's how you're gonna get 162. <laughs> you know what I because mean? I'm telling you, that that's exactly right, man. And and again, I, I would like for guys to understand just because you don't walk out with any hardware does not mean your 362 wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I tell guys also too, don't judge a man based on how many trophies he has. You know what I'm saying? Don't but don't base the man on how much money he won or how much he bet on what because I have seen some trash in Puerto Rico that oh, yeah. they bet ten thousand on. I'm like, dude, that was some garbage. Like if you took the price tag off the if you took the bet off the screen, you would never know in a thousand years they bet that kind of money on those two birds. You'd be like, what the you well, bet that on that? And, and you know, Facebook does that though, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's um, right. There, there's, man, there's, you know, there's people that post 15 derbies, 16 derbies, you know, but you, I know where they show and I know the right. level, you know what I mean? Right, right. And that's like, you know, but people fo follow that stuff. I don't know why, you right. know, oh, the trophies, the trophies, the trophies, but right. they don't really know exactly where they're showing, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's right. 
you know, what's and the what they sure to get. I mean, believe me, I completely understand that. And that's why I'm trying to change the focus from the trophies to the 362. That's what it is. You know, that's where your chances are made. That's where you, 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 you made or you broke in that 362. And again, stop criticizing and judging people. Like, man, you know, I walked away with the trophy. But, dude, if you were sitting on the sideline and seeing what he was competing against, you would be like, oh, you needed was some pigeons. If you had yeah. some pigeons, in there, you, you didn't let with <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I, I didn't see it, dude. I didn't see it. And everybody have a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Everybody have a bad day. But that's what makes the greats great. They take the, yeah. them losses to the chin. They take them to the chin. They take them to the heart. And say, now I need to go back and I need to adjust. It ain't no excuses. Y'all said that a hundred times. No, what did y'all say a hundred times? It ain't no excuses. It ain't no excuses. Again, man. You know, there's, it, been it, times, there's been times where, like, there, there's one time, you know, uh, I believe it was one of our second fights, you know, they, they you know, the bird just demolished us, you know, just ran right. us over. You know, right. Like, yeah, people like, oh, man, oh, man, you know, oh, they, they made you guys look, you know, this and that, this and that, and like, it's part of it, you know. You go and congratulate the other guy, then you have they a have, rooster, dude. Congratulations, right? Here, right. You know, but you don't hate on them, you don't talk shit, you know. But people want to talk shit to you, you know. It's like, right, what do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. you got a rooster. What's the big deal? It happens, right? Thing. You know, everybody get ran over. over. We right. took an ace, you know? we took an ace, and they had a double barrel, so. You know, it is, it is <laughs> weird. Like, it, that's it, what it is, brother. Yeah. And, that's and that's would, exactly. And I'm okay when we lose to something like that that's superior. No, no, there's no shame in that, you know. To just no, man, you better. should be honored. You no. should be honored. You got whooped by a better rooster. Yeah. Period. Okay. I mean, and again, it's always a better rooster. You just hope you don't run into him because it's yeah. always a better one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have- he, it's, we didn't have one for that rooster, so I'll tell you that much. Exactly, see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know what that got what that taught y'all? Y'all seen it. And now y'all seen it, y'all want it. And now you know you you know what I got in my yard is at one level. But I seen what that ran over top of us like we was just like we didn't have we was just standing there. You yeah. know what that does? The next time y'all look at something. You ain't gonna be able to take that into back, back in your mind. <laughs> you be like, man, he ain't yeah. sure like that when that ran is over. Yeah, that just yeah. makes our selection a higher level. You know that. That's right. That, that just sets it up a higher level for us yeah. on our selection. And it and yes. it and it has elevated everything. You know, as far as like we said, numbers. You know, when we have selection, it makes a makes a world of a difference. You know, it, make, it makes a world of a difference. And, and not just that is like you you got to get to the point where you stop collecting chickens. You know we talked about our, our uh, skittles or rainbow whatever. <laughs> skittles, you know? brother, skittles. Yeah. skittles right? <laughs> and, and so we can uh, we we can't have a little bit of everything because you know I prefer to have fifty uh, of the same or thirty of the same or ten of the same. Uh, right. But at least you know you're consistent, right? It's a little right. bit easier to 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 weed through it, and you know that. Uh, uh, you'll have a consistent show, you right? Know, and you know your fault. And you know what consistently shows you is that you do have a system. Yeah. That's what consistently. And I don't care what it is. You can be making cars. If you got a car, a model of car that transmissions are always bad. It's a glitch in the system. Right. It's not the metal. It's not the parts because you know those same that same metal is used in other transmissions that don't fail. But what consistently does and why stream and why I think is extremely important is it don't define just the end product, it defines how you got to that product. That's what it defines. It defines your system. So if you consistently producing good, not only do you got good chickens, but it's other parts of your program that's actually good too. Yeah. If you got bad chickens, that's telling you that your program is bad. Right. You know, you might have two or three good spots in the program but that's not the program that's just a part of the program that consistently determines the quality of your program or your system what you know however you want to label it you know what i'm saying so that's why it's important if you got to consist they might not be super top level but if they consistent then you know okay i know the ingredient we got to change we got to change the genetics because we consistently producing these. They're all good. They're all healthy. But they ain't that re- that train record. 
So yeah. the only way to check that train record, you got to do that in the brew pen. But everything else is good. These are very valid points that the new guys in the sport need to take heed to and need to understand. If you even want to be the one track king or the pit king locally, these are the lessons you're going to have to learn. Uh, Period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and to the, um, to the upcomers, um, this is the key, you know, well, not the key, but this is a big uh, key to it. If you doubt any of the birds you're showing, like I was saying earlier, um, mm -hmm. okay, this guy, they let him break, or we go up in the air, and they let him do this, so they, you know what I mean? If he has right. to wait for a certain fine file, then get him out sure. of there. Don't you? Right. Yeah. Any little right. doubt you have of any little bird, get him out of there. Don't. It, and I think another it. another important thing is, you know, if they're not ready, don't go. You know, right. like don't right. be afraid to put them out. To put them out, right. let them let them get the grass, let them let them relax, and then and then right. bring them back in. Because you know, sometimes these guys will cycle up or or down. Right. And if they're on the right. downward trend, you know, you're not going to be, you're you're not going to compete at the level. You know, and you gotta you gotta. That's again goes back to paying attention to the details, right? And mm -hmm. understanding that. Hey, look, we passed it last week, you know. Right. We passed right. it last week. I think uh, this week we we better give them some rest and then see if we can get them to pull together. Uh, right. Know, put them out and let them relax. Cause... And then you got, yeah. And then you have your birds gym where uh, one week they're up here sparring up here, next week they're down. You know, right. they're up and down. Those right. two, you know, you gotta get get them out of there. You want something consistent. You know. Right. And every time we, you know, you spar or do whatever you have to do, you know, check them out. You know, and a lot of people it, make that mistake where like, oh, yep. well, he did good last week. I'm hoping, you know, fight eight. No, no, man. Don't, you ain't got time for that. that, that way, no? That's right. No time for that. That's, no, that's, a, that's, that's a very valid point. Exactly. Again, that just goes back to what I'm saying. And, and this is how, I, you know, I used to know some guys in, in hunting dogs. And uh, it seemed like the bigger the yard they got, the lower they standards went. Now, that doesn't go for everybody. <laughs> you know, that doesn't go for everybody. Because I know some guys that had some big yards and had some dang good dogs throughout the whole entire yard. But I know some guys, the more lot land they have, man, the worst quality dogs they had. It's like, dude, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, he, oh, just another barrel, another chain, you know, another two scoops of dog food a day. And I'm just like, dude, the quality of your dogs weren't like they were. You know, when you only had space for 10, you know what I'm saying? When you had space for 10, you had 10 monsters. Now you got a yard. You went out here and bought a half an acre or an acre. Now you got 30 dogs. And you know what I mean? And you only really still only got 10 good ones. You got 20 yeah. ones that sell car, you know, and you kind of making excuses. Oh, if, you know, if he get on this kind of rabbit, he can do it. If he get on this kind of wild pig, he can do but it's like, dude, you ain't got that choice when you go out there. You know, that, that hunting dog, that, that catch dog might get on a wild boar that's a monster. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, yeah, exactly. You they know, and, and again, man. You're, you're only as strong as your weakest link, you know? So if you yep. go there, you're probably going to get called up first anyway. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> Right, That's you're probably true. gonna get called up with your weakest league first, and you're already yep. gonna start off on the wrong foot, you know. So the doctor talked about that. Doctor, you know, the doctor Wan when he came on, he talked about that. You know, he said he don't keep a lot of birds. There's like, well, how do you select which ones you're gonna use? He said, I show brother to brother, and guy was like, what? Oh, I'm like he's like, yeah, I'm gonna show. I show brother to brother, and the one that wins is the one I'm gonna keep, and I'm gonna use. I'm like. Now, I never thought about that now because guys look like, now nah, I ain't rolling two, two chickens, you know? Both of them could be aces. Well, <laughs> the thing is, is the way the doctor looked at it is, is the one who win would have been the oh, the competition's bird. And the one that lost would have been his bird. So he's like, I'd rather lose him here than to lose him out there. Because if I have his brother can beat him, then a competitor can beat him. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And that makes sense because you, you, you lose – more than just that, you know, you lose time, everything, yep, exactly. everything that goes invested into it, you know. So it's yep. a, it's a, it's actually a smart way, right? It's a good. It's a good. I never heard good, that before, uh, man, uh, and it really makes me right. think. I've never tried. Yeah, that. right. I never, I never heard. I mean, I never heard nobody say that. When he said, I was like, Whoop. I got like thirty messages. Like, dude, did you hear what the doctor just said? I'm like, yeah. 
And he's like, well, it all depends too, Jim. I mean, it, it all depends too on on what weapon you're trying them out because um, obviously. Uh, no, I think I think what he meant so it was was mainly inspiring. Oh, you oh, yeah. know, because like you were just about to say, yeah, you can't really, you can't really do that with no. Yeah. Now you'd be throwing out, you'd be throwing both of them away. Yeah. You know, you won't yeah. get to use either one. No, 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 yeah. no. He mean it's sparring. Same thing. I do, I, right. I from like six brothers and uh, say right. I have six ten brothers. I'll spar between them. I'm talking about right. constantly weeks. That's months, right. Whatever. And the more that's the right. One, the most, you know, that's the one I, you know, and I'll show that's the brothers and stuff like that. But, but yeah, I thought it was with the with the weapon. I was like, well, never. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. No, you yeah. can't do that. No, because they'll both be gone. No, they'll be but they'll be both gone. But in sparring, you know, he believed that the one that yeah. wins is Absolutely. the one he's, you know, yep, yep. That I think I don't like I said. Right, that's exactly right. And, and guys might say, oh, that's common sense. That's common sense, man. You know how many yards I've been on that guys have sparring, you know, chickens. Like they use just for sparring. Like, no, nah, this is my, uh, 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 you know, sparring chicken to teach the other ones and all that. So it ain't as common. A lot of guys are like, oh, that's common sense. No, nah, that ain't that common, dude, because I have been to a lot of places that ain't never done that and never talked about doing it. They have a whole selection of sparring chickens. And I understand the concept. They're like, this yeah. one right here got a lot of movement. This, this one got a lot of power. You know what I'm saying? And I'm really trying to give him an experience of, you know, different types of experience against different types of – listen, it makes all the sense, and I'm not uh, doubting it or questioning it at all, you know, but just a doctor just came up with, like, I don't even do that. I don't have no sparring chickens. The only chickens I have is their brothers. That's all I have, yeah. you know, and that's all I'm going to have. And I'm like, well, I guess that's another way to look at it. It's another way to look at it. At, at the end of the day, you know, it, it all, you know, the results in the pit is what counts. That's you know, it. So That's it. Because they can look like superstars. They can whoop all their brothers and go in there and get ran over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, and that's another reason why we compete, obviously, at high level because, you know. Right. You, know, you want to see what you have. That's, you know, you want right. to see what, the, you know, what you're – capable of you know you your birds you know your skills are, you know all those factors you know that come in and you're like you know can i compete so here? you know right right and, and y'all so how do y'all guys feel man you know every time y'all come back y'all know y'all got to take it up another notch but you know how do y'all guys feel like y'all feel like y'all are doing pretty good like you know my our roosters looking at the way i was performed looking at the the way they perform, we, we working with something. You know, we, we got some pretty good birds. Do y'all feel like that? Or do y'all feel like, oh. man, you, oh, you know, no, we, we, we five notches behind? No, no, not, never that. I mean, like this time, we didn't get out rooster but that one. You know what I mean? Right. Um, our birds weren't made, you, could, you know, you're never going to know what it is, obviously. People that, right. okay, yeah, you, you could try to adjust, obviously. You adjust to what right. you think. Maybe a possibility. But no, definitely. We did not get out rooster, you know. We right. had the, the roosters compete, you know. We, I'm gonna say, three out of the four fights, we could have won them. One of them, right? <laughs> one of them was my fault. One of them was my fault. And I got shit for it. But it's all, even, it's all see, learning experience. From, yeah. Exactly. Even from right. just the, uh, from raising, it comes down to the handling, right. you know. But right. I'm glad it happened. To us, with me, and not another right. handler. You know what I mean? Because then right. I would have flipped out. Right. <laughs> they, they, they call you know Jim over there. They don't mess around, man. Like mm -hmm. when they tell you pit or you know what you mean, um, leave it in, which means let your roosters go. You better right. do it. Yeah. Right. If you don't do it. You better take your hands out. Yeah, you have to release that bird or draw, no matter what. And that cost us. You know, our bird mm -hmm. was like didn't have anything on him. But, you know, I try to pull a, a fast one, try to be smart about it. And, <laughs> we and it backfired, it. huh? Yeah. And, you know, it cost us elimination, you know, boom. Uh, like, Dang it, dude. And I, I was bummed out for Del mm. Manuel, man. I was like, mm. I'm sorry, guys. You know. Right. But you live and learn from that. So it's just not the actual birds. It's, you know, yeah. it comes down to the – when you go in those – when you participate in those big events, you better know what you're doing if you're going to be handling right. it in there. Right. You know, it's, it's, right. And – and it's, you know, it's like I, 
it's easy, for, you know, from uh, outside looking in. But when you're in there, you know, and that's kind of what we talked about. When you're in there, where you're in the trench, it's a whole right. other game, you know. You don't really right. hear everybody, you know. You're he can make the best decision, you know. And for us, we're always good with them. We put our trust into it, and and right. win, lose, or draw, it doesn't right. matter, you know. We right. we roll with it, and and well, mistakes happen, sure. Yeah, we adjust down the road. It, it, it is what it is, you know. Right. We've all had them. We've all had to adjust. And, That's right. Know, it, it didn't roll yeah. our way, you know. It didn't roll our way. We could have been a little better all the way across the board, you know. Uh, but but, you, it, it, but yeah, it, we it, came I, back. You know, we came back. I think what it is. No, I understand. But but you know what 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 what's, what I think is really great is the fact that I would rather be at a show and lose because we didn't mend all the pieces together versus lose because I didn't have enough rooster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. the hard one to swallow. You know, when you lead in and you know like your roosters is not at that level, it's like, yeah. now that's a hard one to swallow. Now, I'd rather leave you there saying, I handled wrong, I didn't prep them right, you know what I'm saying, too much moving, you know, all that. He wasn't hydrated enough. Hey, I can accept yeah. all that. But if you leave there and you like, got I don't have enough rooster. Now that's a problem. All that yeah. other stuff is just, you know, not a, you know, it comes with the game. But when you exactly. go there, and you just get out rooster. That is the probably the hardest thing for people to accept. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's the part too where we left. Okay, well, there's obviously room for improvement. You know, but we were more competitive. We just we have to adjust. We need to be right. cutting better. We need to be more organized. We right. we gotta fine tune everything down, you know, everything, right. everything down to right. to the T and leave right. no stone on turn, no you know, a little bit of confidence there. Yeah, confidence, but you know, make sure you check all your work, you know. Right. Uh, right. Uh, trust, verify, make sure everything's good to go. Have everything there mm -hmm. early, be prepared for whatever. If the sky's falling or whatever's coming, we're ready, you know. And right. I think really that opened their eyes to that part where it's like, okay, we had a lot of room for improvement, you know, on this particular right. one because, you know, we took two entries and and we did something that, that we hadn't done taking two entries, right? So, again, it's right. another learning experience, you know. Can we handle it? I think now we understand, hey, look, this is the things that we need in order to be successful, right? Uh, right. We can do it. Now we understand what it takes to do it. You know, right? Because uh, well, again, we're learning because uh, this is not same as our last time. Last time we only had the last two times we only had one entry, and this time we had two. So right. obviously, complicates the situation even more. Uh, and mm -hmm. we walk away uh, with a lot of learning from that, and a lot, a lot of, of learning. But it still, it still was yeah. a great experience, uh, uh, and it was a totally new experience. Yes, yeah, totally yeah. new, totally, totally good experience. You know, and. We laughed and, you know, it, it had a good time doing it. You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, we didn't get the results we wanted. But as far as a team, as a group, I feel like we right. got even closer, you know, as a team. Uh, you know, there were some extra pieces that came into the group and, you know, also like essential pieces to the puzzle. You know, a couple of buddies uh, also entered with us. And, and I think as a group, as a collective, uh, you know, we got what it takes to just fine tuning everything. And the experience right. was awesome. You know, we got to, we had a good time. We, right. we, we had a great time as, as friends, you know, as friends, not just chicken man, as friends, we had a good time. It was a good experience. So yes, I, next and time I totally, we get the results we're looking for. Right. You know, right. But, right. Y'all just adding to the, y'all just adding to y'all war chest of, of experience. That's the way I look at it. You know, you add into your war chest or every time. And again, no time is going to be exactly the same. Yeah. So, doesn't matter how good you were last year, how it all worked out last year, what you did last year. I promise you'll be lucky if you can use 60% of what you did last year, the next year. I'm exactly. telling you, because there's so many different variables, man. And even the best, you know, nobody consistently wins all the time. And it's because of so many different variables. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, but what very few at that level, you know, that, that very, very few at that level, three, you know, very, very few guys. And, it, you know, it's because it's, it's extremely difficult. Everything it has is, to line up. And and most of the guys that do stay consistent is because they go to all the events. So that's another thing we right. got to do, too, is that we got to set ourselves up to 
to be able to do this across the board so that when we get there, the anxiety is lower, the shock, all that stuff is, is way less. And we're already right. used to this. You know, it's another right. thing in the office. So, yes. you know, it, it's another thing we talked about also is just staying consistent and going and going and going. You know, it, 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 we got to cowboy up and do it. Yeah, we got to cowboy up and do it and, and go. Regardless of the result, right. regardless of what anybody says, whether we can That's or right. can't, we, we just got to, right. we just got to, you know, put, you know, put on our boots and, and head on out. And you know? do it, man. You got to put on it. Yes, I mean, I, I, I agree 100 percent, man. You just got to put on the boots and do it and take your focus just off that trophy and say, man, listen, because, look, I always say this. If you if you focus on all the 362 stuff, those trophies going to come. Those trophies going to come. But if all you got and all you focus on is just that trophy, man, you want to miss so much other stuff, dude. And you want it's gonna be more like a gamble or, or luck, like oh, if I can just get it, if, or if he can just do this, or if I can, whether it's just right. And, because you have no experience, you know, you just basing on this luck, and if he can do it, no, man, you got to create those situations, man. You got to create those situations. If you're not creating those situations, they just not going to come. And you become better at creating those situations the more active you are. The more Absolutely. active you are, the more better you at better you become better at creating the perfect storm for y'all to get that trophy. Well, it's, like we like, uh, the storm. it's just like anything else, just like uh an example. Uh cons we'll say construction. You know, right. you got a right. guy studied engineer and stuff like that, and you know, everything's on paper, but then you got the guy mm -hmm. in the field actually physically doing it. It's when different. When this guy comes out, you know, they ask him to do, mm -hmm. okay, do this. And he don't know what to do. He's going by the books. He's like, they're mm. looking at him like, what the fuck are you doing? It, it didn't you know? say that in the paperwork. But yeah, you know what? And, 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 that's a, and you know what? And Mark, that's a great point. And you know how you deal with that in construction? Take a renovator and a new construction contractor. Man, you take a guy, a new construction contractor who's usually building those and put him in a house that got to be renovated. Like they don't even they don't know nothing about demo. They know nothing about making a a, a crooked wall straight. They don't know nothing about that. But if you put them on a, a slab, they'll throw it, they frame that house out in, in seventy two hours, and it'll be a two story house framed out. But you put them in a little three two and tell them to gut this thing out and redo it, man. That guy be lost, man. He'll be lost. Same thing with the chickens. Same thing with the chickens. You know, people hear stories and listen to what's his name. Listen to what's his name. He's yep. doing this. He's doing. Dude, go do it yourself. And <laughs> that's how you're going to learn from your mistakes. Yep. Not their that's mistakes, right. your mistakes. You know, that's you right. Do and don't ask questions. You, got, yep. you, think, you know, I mean, obviously it's good to ask questions, but, I'm, you know, if right. you depend on other people, like, hey, what do you think happened here? You know, then you start getting opinions from different people, different people. Who's, the, who's yep. right? Right. You know, who's right? Just, just yourself, you know. You got it, man, dude. We you talked about that. You have to do it, man. There is, listen, man. And that's one of the things you see on Facebook. Everybody want to argue their point. Like, is their point right? You know what? In a particular situation, your point is right. But in a, a particular situation, your point is wrong. You know what I'm saying? What you're telling me, in a particular situation, it will work. But then also, too, what you're telling me, in a, a different situation, it will not work. And that's why I tell guys, and I think I posted this yesterday. I said, every if you travel, the more you travel, the more farms you visit, the more chickens you see show, the more breeders you get to know and talk to. Everything that somebody tell you won't work, I promise you, you can find somebody that is working for it. Yeah. I, pr I promise yeah. you. Let me tell you, man. There's way too many roads that lead to, to the same result at the end. You know, and again, it's for per, per, per situation. I don't care if the person won all of the Sunset Derbies. That does not mean he can tell you how to point something in Mexico. I don't care. You know, and again, the same thing with the crosses. We had this conversation in a group yesterday about crosses. Guys like, oh, man, I seen this kind of cross with this kind of cross. And it was nothing but trash. I said, first thing you got to take a look at is yeah. what birds did the person even start from that you talking about? Yeah. Because you got trash birds in every cross. So what birds did, you, did they even start with? Who was the person who even done it? You know what I'm saying? I hear guys say sweaters are garbage. I'm pretty sure there are some garbage sweaters, but I'm pretty sure there's some good ones too. They're right. like, oh, Hatch has got a lot of bottom. 
I'm pretty sure they got some hatches that try to fly through the stands, and they got some hatches that laid there to the last draw. Come on, dude. If you expose and you spend a lot of time talking to a lot of people and seeing a lot of things, I promise you it would change your whole perspective. Stop thinking what somebody say is gold. It might be gold for a particular situation, but you still want to have to do it, period. And that's, and that's one of the biggest mistakes uh, people do, Jim. Like, okay, so-and-so is winning with um, Hatch Kelsos. Oh, man, I'm going to buy right. some Hatch Kelsos and you know do the same thing. You don't expect the same results if you're not using the same blood. Like, you know I mean? Right, exactly, <laughs> man. <laughs> and and, and they're coming out of two different brew pins. Two different yeah. brew pins. Two different people selecting them. Just because they got Kelso on, on the right side and, and you know and sweater on it, come on. You, Listen, you man. I have it on with two brothers, you know, with two <laughs> brothers, and, and and one person selects a certain way or something suits you better, you know, your yep. style, your yep. your look or whatever, you know. Like I I think uh I think a lot of times, you know, people get caught up in all that Here's stuff, but you gotta well, whatever suits you. There's may I think I think they're success for everybody, right? You right, just, I think you, everybody can get some. It's just uh, you know we all choose to go in a, a different route, you know. But that's the right. Always okay. has to stay right, you know. Your right. Here's another right. one. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one. Oh, uh, when you're using a cell, make sure you use the cock on top. At oh, two right. American game. <laughs> get the fuck, dude. <laughs> you know what I told him? Listen, dude. No, listen. This. You know what? Do it vice versa. Whatever works for you, go for that. Don't you know, listen. Don't, don't be afraid to take. You know, take. I was going to put a post up tonight. I was going. I was going to put a post up tonight. That and I am going to still put it up. And the post said that, you know, you can seek opinions, but, but don't seek approval. The only person you approval you should be seeking is a person paying that feed bill. Now you can take, you can seek all the advice that you want, but at the end of the day, I do not understand why some people are so into they only going to try what somebody else told them that worked. What I have learned is if you feed those chickens, man, how do you think these crosses ever came up anyway? Somebody tried it. How do you think? All of these different strategies of pointing, of raising, of worming, of how do you think they came up? Because somebody tried it. That's how they learned it. I'm just saying that's how they learned it. You know, guys told me, man, running a bird on a treadmill will only <laughs> teach him how to run. I thought that was the most, I ain't going to say retarded, but I thought that was the most <laughs> illogical thing that made <laughs> When he told me that, he was like, you know, you run a bird on a treadmill, you know, that's going to teach a bird how to run. Okay, so free range in a bird. They, they don't run on a free range? Like, what are you talking about, dude? You said if I take a free range chicken since he's been running around hunting for food, he's going to run? What I have learned is, is this. The bird will have to show me better than you can tell me. Yeah, that's my model. The bird going to have to show me better than you can tell me. You say it don't work, let the bird show me it don't work. I don't care what you're telling me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, and the thing is, is why is everybody so much seeking approval on that? You know, again, seek advice, but don't ever seek approval. The only approval you need is a person paying that fee bill. And it might be your wife. You know, you might have to go to your wife and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm, I'm at I'm going to spend an extra hundred dollars a month on this chicken feed. That might be the only approval outside of yourself you need to seek. But other hey, than that, that, dude, that was a joke, honey. <laughs> I've learned, like, mm -hmm. you know, not to bother. Before, I would probably get into it and get into a debate and stuff like that, and it was right. stupid. You know? Right. Now, it's like, I just scroll through it, you know? It's like, you know, I, I that's, comment, that's what I learned, man. But you know what? Yep. All I think is, like, man, this poor guy's vulnerable. Someone's going to eat him up. 
Someone's gonna yep. just come in. You know, just yep. like the guys say, who has the best hatch? Who has the best sweater? Who has the best Kelso? Oh my, you know, and you should see all these com- oh, you know, I I don't even know what to say, you know, with those kind of uh threads, you know, it's like really yep. people really going out there, so and so has the best one, so and so and some of these people don't even have those bloodlines. Right. You know, they just don't right. because they hear names. That's right. what I mean, where you need to go out there and do things yourself. Right. Test your birds, compete as in the highest level you can, if you can. Mm-hmm. You right. Know, do everything yourself. Don't listen to what, you know, other people are saying, especially if they're not showing or right. if you know they don't have something, to, you know, they're not proving it to you. You know what I mean? Right. I can understand right. this guy. Right. This guy just won seven derbies in a row. Fuck, yeah. okay, right. I don't mind listening to him, you know? That's but right. Some of these guys. Maybe, uh, even like that, I most guys. Too. Most of them guys, though, you know, most of the guys will impose their beliefs on you as far as they can't do it, you know. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta, you just gotta roll the dice, man. Like even the way we started feeding, uh, you know, I took a little bit from everybody, right? I, right. I've, there's been like you know three guys really that have been the key, and I take a right. little, we took a little bit. I took a lot right from one, and then take a little bit from everybody, and then at the end of the day, it becomes something that you know over the years has worked or that we came up with. Right, right. Still utilizing a lot of the bases, which they didn't mm-hmm. really differ too much. It's just, you know, we've tried it different ways, and it, it all works. So, right, shit, you got to roll the dice, man. You know, you got you got to roll the dice. You have to, man. And why not try it? That's the thing. I'm like, dude, why not try it? I mean, you feeding probably, you know, what you gonna raise thirty, uh, twenty extra chickens? I'm like, dude, you got twenty extra chickens, and you already should be feeding anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, if you try it and it don't work. It ain't like a loss because you had 20 birds in your yard that you probably shouldn't have been feeding. Anyway, so what are you talking about? So, especially you know, again. Yeah. Especially if you're doing the same thing and getting the same results. Like, it, you have to adjust somewhere, you know? Like, you're doing the same thing over and over, right? That you don't that's system. Years, years, that's right. Years. That's system. It's like, yeah, you know, like, okay, it took you to this point. Well, then how do we layer on top of that, you know? What what, right. what is it that's missing, you know? Chickens, right. feeder, handler, that's, X, that's right. whatever. You know, well, where do we that's layer right. from there? So Right. And, and, and just analyzing that system. Yep, yep, just analyzing that system. But again, guys, like I, I say, you know, I'm definitely not trying to take – because I get some flack for it. Some people vocal about it. Some people not. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again – I'm just just assessing it and really looking at it and saying, man, you know, a lot of these guys are missing a lot of opportunity. They can actually be a lot better than what they are, you know, but I just think their eye is on the wrong prize. Their eye is on the destination. It's all in the journey. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. And, you know, again, you know, I tell people, and I caught a lot of flack with using the term 362. Oh, man, when I first came out, 362 – Man, I got bombarded. Like I didn't. Like, what are you talking? What are you three? You gotta take care of your. Bur- I mean, they could. They was rushing to the internet to prove Jim Collins wrong before they even understood the concept of what I was saying. I never said you don't take care of your birds 365 days a year. I'm just saying if the first 362 ain't right, throw the last three in the trash can. Right. Don't right. even waste your time and don't give away your bird and your money. That's all That's I was good. saying. But again, in this internet world and in and, and, and the way how this culture has been driven over decades, listen, man, that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't believe in that model because if that's the case, we'll still be riding horse and buggies from the East Coast to the West Coast. You see what I'm saying? I don't believe in that. You know, Henry Ford, the, the rubber that he used to make tires on a Model T, they don't make those tires like they do. The, you know what I'm saying? Today, the tires are more durable. They last longer. They can travel at higher rates of speed. They're better in multiple conditions, you know, roll conditions. Come on now. I don't believe in that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Are you kidding me? We wouldn't have cell phones right now. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they, they always have to improve, you know. Because have to, dude. And sometimes you need to break the mold or do something totally different, like an electric car. You know, where's the engine at? Why we ain't got gas? Why we don't have diesel? I mean, is it is an electric engine? What you talking about? That's not an improvement. That's a totally different engine. Totally yeah. different. So all that it don't, you know. And again, guys, I get a lot of flat, but I'm standing my ground because I have seen hundreds. Of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of fights, 
And I have seen so many different top breeders and thousands of little breeders. And it's a lot that I have seen. And I'm telling you from experience, I have learned. Everything somebody tell you won't work, I promise you, you can find somebody that it is working. Every cross that somebody say won't work, I promise you, you can find somebody out there that cross did work. Every, you know, somebody tell you don't point a bird this way, I promise you, you can find somebody that points a bird that way and it will work. You have to learn it, man. You have to master your craft. You know what I'm saying? That everybody who go buys a rifle is not going to hit the target at 500 yards the same way. Some will never hit the target and some will hit it on a third try or their first try. It ain't the rifle. It ain't the rifle. But if you say, nope. hey, don't use that rifle because Ted over there, you know, at 100 yards, he couldn't even hit the thing out the box with the rifle. I'm like, well, Billy over here can pull it out the box and hit the target at 500 yards. Like, what are you doing, man? And that's what I learned from experience, man. Watching oh, yeah. all of these guys, man. It's just like, uh, I didn't think it was going to work. And it worked. It happens all the time. I mean, I had all the time. One time tell me, one guy told me one time, um, he gave a, I forgot what it was. I think it was some, some Albany's or something like that. You know, he mm -hmm. gave it to a friend, you know, as right. a gift. Now the right. friend, you know, he's happy because he got these birds through friendship. Right. This right. guy gave it to him because he wasn't doing no good with them. He, he he wasn't having no luck with them. Not because he was giving them because they were good birds, but the other guy right. didn't know that, right? See what I'm saying? So the other guy starts the other guy starts winning with these birds. And this guy, after the fact, one day we're talking, he's like, dude, can you believe this shit, man? I give him these birds. And, <laughs> I mean, there were no dumb heels, but fuck, this guy's won so many birds, I couldn't win shit with those birds. <laughs> <laughs> Because he gave it to him with bad intentions, you know. That's right. That's right. Not, you know, he's thinking you, you know, it's through friendship, but in right. reality, you got him because the other guy didn't want him. It was trash. That's right. That's and, right. And look, <laughs> and look what he's doing. But that proved two points. That proved two points. One of the points that proved what I was just saying. What somebody say not gonna work. I promise you'll find somebody else that it will be working. He those birds didn't work for him. He was giving them away. The other point is, too, when people say, oh, the best birds you're going to get are gifted. That's a lie. That's a lie. The best birds I ever had, I bought. The best birds I ever had, I bought. And I bought them from the pit. I see them perform, and I bought them. The best birds I ever had, I bought. I was not gifted. Now, that goes back to what you just said. Now, that guy is going to tell that story. He ain't going to tell the other half of the story. He gonna tell his part of the story. <laughs> he gonna he gonna tell his right. He gonna tell his part of the story, which was those birds I don't want seventeen derbies with. Those birds was gifted to me. Then they'll get on the internet and say the best birds I ever got was gifted. He not going to say the guy who gifted it to me only did it because they wasn't working for him. So it ain't like that guy gifted you his aces. That guy gifted you something he thought was trash. Exactly. They ain't gonna tell that part of the story on the internet. That part of the story ain't gonna be on there. They only gonna tell the one part, which is the best bird you can get is, is gifted. That's a bald faced lie because I know guys who give away trash all day long. Yes. And, and, uh, and everything and has a situation, good. right? Like mm -hmm. it's like everything, right? Everybody has their situation. Sometimes right. you will have a good friend that will gift you some stuff. Exactly. But you know, exactly. It's not a, it's always a case by case, right? It's never. Right. It's never the foundation. Across the board. It's not across the board. Yeah, it's not, board. No. Yeah, it's not universal. Anybody no. who gift your bird, he might be gifting you, he gifting you his best no. or something. No. Nah, nah, no. nah. Because that guy you know, got those birds unintentionally. Yeah. And you, know, you should know, and more, I'm, I'm talking in general, like the more right. experience you have and stuff like that, you know when they give them when they're giving them to you, like out of kindness, compared right. to like, okay, this fucker just gave them to me because he don't yeah. want them. Right. And I've been in that situation. I've told Manuel, right. this will give me these birds because he don't want them. They're just right. You know I mean? I right. Know. He's not giving them to me because, you know, you know, got his kind heart, you know? Right. So people should know that too. They should, but it's hard, obviously, for for an up and coming, up and comer to, to catch that, you know? Right. You know, they, they the learning. birds are like, oh, I'm very excited, <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. No, man, I'm telling you, dude, that's a prime example. You just proved my point. You know, you just proved my point, man. And again, man, I just think people need to stop 
being stuck in this it's either one way or the other way. You know, you only get to, you get your best bird through gifts. No, you might have got your best birds through gifts. I never got my best birds through gifts. The guy next to me might have got his best birds through gifts. But everything is not cut and dry cookie cutter. You know, what works right. for okay. what didn't work for somebody. I mean, again, I have gotten so much reluctance in getting American guys even to put their birds on gravel, right? You will be amazed of how many guys downgrade or talk bad about putting birds on gravel, but they never tried it. Now, how can you have an opinion on putting birds on gravel and you never put the bird on gravel? You never pat a, one bird in your life on gravel, but you're on the Internet saying, I've been doing this for 40 years. And I'm telling you, you put the birds on gravel, you're going to have bubble foot. Listen, I have guys now who've been following me since in Puerto Rico that have their birds on gravel here in the States and not one case of bubble foot. It proves my point again. It proves my point and again. I, and I've seen that, Jim. I think i seen a picture where you posted a picture and there's a, a rooster on Thank the you. gravel. Thank you. Right, and, and you exactly. Know I looked at it and I was like, okay, I'm assuming they do that in Puerto Rico. It did cross my mind about the bubble foot, but never right. once I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Because I'm pretty sure that's what they do over there. And Right. It's true though. Right. You know, it's true. Right. Just because you put it on. That's exactly you know, right. It doesn't mean you're gonna get bumblefoot. You know what I mean? Right. It's, right. And the same thing in the states. Too. I was like, check this out. It's, it's on on grab one. They're, they're cool. You know, it's like it's not exactly. Like but hold on. Check this out, Mario. Look at. I posted some pictures of a guy in Georgia. He almost got all of his pins down in gravel. And the guys was like, "Oh, that gravel didn't work." I took some pictures off his page and posted it in the comment section. Now, ask him, is it working? He's not in Puerto Rico. He's right here in Georgia. So ask him if his birds are getting bubble foot. And he don't got three birds on it. He got 100 birds on it. So now, what is that's the proof. Then that's my proof. Show me your proof. Well, I never had a bird on gravel, but it looks like it hurt. I don't care what it looked like. Yeah. Why are you trying to convince somebody else not to use it and you never tried it yourself? Exactly. Absolutely. They're speaking and they're not experts in the... Man, not only are they not experts, do <laughs> they don't they are telling somebody else not to yeah. do something and they have never done it before. So I have posted a comment like, listen, try it for yourself. Top taking somebody else's experience and saying I'm not going to do it because, you know, Freddie over there didn't work for him. He tried it 10 different times and it fell 10 different times. Well, that guy couldn't do good with those birds, but, but gave it to your friend and he done went out there and smashed them with him. You see what I'm saying? It happens. It happens. That's why it goes back to what y'all guys said. You got to try it on your own. You have to try it for yourself, period. You have to. And that's, that's if you, how do you say, that? that's if you want to better yourself. You know, Right. You know, get confident, stuff like that. Now, if you're not in it, see, we're in it because we love it. We love this. Right. You know? We want to better ourselves. We want to be the best of the best, obviously. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, if you're not in it for that and you just, want to sell and stuff like that well then that's a different mm -hmm. story but you right know, we, we right. we're in it because we want to better ourselves you know we, we right. love the, the, the game right you know right and, and some people are not in there for that some people are in there for money you know different reasons sell. right right and we yeah. all have different drives you know we we we, we just got to ask you why 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 do you want to do it you know what is that drives right. you and the same 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 question we have to ask each other you know i think that's why our partnership works is because we have that communication there what what drives us? Well, we have a similar uh, goal in mind, you know, or, or right. same uh, ideas in mind. So right. all that makes That's a difference, you know. What what drives you? If you want to sell chickens, nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. Sell your right. kids, make a few extra bucks, raise right. healthy chickens. There's nothing wrong right. with that, you know. It's and, nothing. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. wrong with that, man. And and, and you're right, Mario. It, you know, it, it goes back to what y'all was saying about you know you see posts on who got the best round heads, who got the best hatches, or you know it was a, it was a I was say controversial post, but it was a very active post when a guy, you know, was saying, should I buy from big or small? And it just kills me <laughs> when people say all big breeders sell nothing but trash and all small breeders are. Are you kidding me? It's more bad small breeders than it is. big. First of all, it's more small, small breeders, period. That's the first thing. It's more lower experience small breeders than big breeders. Big breeders got a lot of experience. Regardless if you like their chickens or not, 
they have a lot of experience and they all have, you can learn from all of them. I don't care if you don't eat like their chickens. You Absolutely. can learn a lot from these big breeders. They took the game to a whole nother level. Now, you know, whatever person's opinion is, again, you can't blame everything on a breeder. You're like, well, I don't, I do single mating. I do group mating. I don't have any opinion. I just know what I do. What you do is your business, you know, because it's success in both. Those big breeders wouldn't be big for as long as they are if they were selling trash, especially right. with the internet, Correct. especially exactly. with the internet. They would be out of business in 36 months if they burst with trash. So that, that right there, just bring some logic to the question. Just bring some logic to the question. If all big breeders were trash, they will already be out of business. They could, you can't sell trash for years. You can't and get away with it. It ain't that many new buyers. <laughs> well, I think yeah, most of the guys right. just don't know what to do with it, you know? Like, uh, right. they're too inexperienced, like you said, that they don't know how to get to where they need to, or they're not doing the research to get to where they need to get to. Right. You know, and they end up the putting in the effort. Said, oh, it didn't work, or, you know, uh, a lot of excuses. And the easiest one to blame, right, is the breeder. Is the, not is the, the breeder, man. Not the chicken, man. man. Not the, right. you know, not the cocker, the, the the right. breeder, the one that the sold me the chickens is the scapegoat. Yep. So they always get it's the always. Yeah, always I, I posted a post and it said that uh, uh, breeder, uh, uh, blaming a breeder is not the solution. And a lot of times <laughs> this is not the solution because, <laughs> because the same breeder you said that his chickens is trash, I promise you can find somebody who's doing well with them. Yeah. I, I bet you. You can find somebody doing well. I promise you can find somebody doing well with them. And they probably came out the same brew pen. Yeah, brothers. They're probably brothers. Brothers and sisters <laughs> are all on the same stuff. I, you know, so, it, you know, guys, sure. but, yeah, you know, again, man, I, I think we covered a lot of great things. You know, again, and that, that was the reason I wanted to bring you out, to have a candid conversation. You know, to have a very candid conversation. Again, it's not an agree or disagree thing. It's just all our perspectives. I'm pretty sure viewers that have their own opinion or if they agree or disagree, that's not a problem. The, 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 the point is, is again, changing the focus because y'all guys seen that the focus wasn't the lack of genetics or, you know, it, it was a lot of moving parts. And it wasn't just the last three. It was stuff that happened way before the last three. You yeah. know what I mean? That y'all needed to make a judge. So, again, you know, you can't. I don't to... Go ahead. Go ahead, Mario. I don't know. I don't let that get to me no more, Jim. This is what I tell Manuel. That's, and this is after this trip. When people want to criticize this dude or they don't agree to it or opinion, whatever. You know what? When you prove it to me in the pit, I'll start respecting that, your opinion. I'm just and saying, let the birds show me better than you can tell me. Simple. That's the new phrase. Let the birds show me better than you can tell me. I hear what you're telling me, but let the birds show me. Let the birds show me better than you can tell me. That's it. Yep. That'll stop all the yin yang and the debating and all this. My strategy better than this. Man, you get so tired of that, man. It's just crazy, man. And when you've been around, and when, yeah, it, I mean, especially when you've been around, you have seen a lot from a lot of different people big, small, medium, experienced, newcomers, different types of crosses, different types of birds, different types of breeds. It's very difficult for somebody to convince you this is it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's some ignorant people out there, Jim. There's ignorant people. Like, yep. I can say that, right? And, and they can be like, well, my bird just won. You know, my, I just won this derby. Okay, but did you do it? Did you condition them? Right. D did right. you put in the work? Or did right. you send them out months before that? Right. You know, when that's you right. do it yourself, that's when, you know, school me on it. You know what I mean? Right. But meanwhile, you know, just keep your opinions to yourself, you know? Of course, because they're missing a lot of parts that they can't speak on. How they gonna school you on a part that they didn't even do? You know what I mean? It's like you didn't do that part. So how you debate with me about that's the same way I felt about the gravel. I got so tired of guys talking about gravel and they never had one bird, they never tested it out. They never had one bird on gravel, but man, they got nothing but negative comments. Nothing but negative comments. So yeah, you would, but but like I say, man, it, it's 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 uh doing what y'all guys do. That keep y'all guys grounded. You know, y'all, y'all, y'all get to look, y'all get to zone out or tune out all the chatter because y'all actually have, doing it. You, you have to. I think in order to stay sane, you mm -hmm. have to tune everybody out and really, you know, just, just troubleshoot with, 
with the guys that matter. I mean, you gotta right. Uh, all the outside chatter makes no difference, regardless of what they say. You know, it makes it no difference. It's all it That's rolls right. off. And you just gotta if sit back and, and enjoy it. If you don't participate, they're doing it. You're not gonna get it. It's just right. like you know, just like hey, um, you do you play the lotto? No, I don't play because I I'll never win. How do you right. know? Right. Obviously, I'm talking big odds now, right? But if you don't play, right. you're not gonna win. Of course, you know why? Because everybody who won won because they played. I never seen nobody win that never played, right or wrong. <laughs> so regardless of what the odds are, the odds could be nine hundred billion to trillion. But, but I can guarantee you this: everybody who won played. I don't care what the odds are. Period. And somebody <laughs> has to win. Somebody has to win. Right. Why can't we be the ones to win? You know, or why can't That's you it. be the ones to win, or whatever the case? That's might be. it. You know, That's so, it. somebody has to sit there with the trophy or with whatever. You know, <laughs> what? What's the? What's the big deal? It could be any one of us. You know? It can be any one of y'all, any one of y'all, because y'all could come in here with the freight trains that day. Exactly. And why everybody else exactly. came in with the, you know, that's the Everybody's thing. Y'all can come up. with the freight trains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, so, it, it, it is good. You know, but like I say, guys, listen, I think we had a very good conversation this evening, man. Some some candid talk. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of guys watching this tonight and a lot of guys who will watch it in the future you know, may agree or disagree with some of the topics or some of the things that we talked about. But I think it's very important that candid conversations are had within this sport and not just regurgitated uh, information. Uh, because, again, I think that regurgitated information uh, uh, allows you to get away without doing any work or doing any investigation. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when, when you have candid conversations, you really put challenge people to try it on your own. And let prove me wrong. And the only way you're gonna prove me wrong is you gotta do it. You can't regurgitate something to me. You gotta actually do it. So again, let the birds show me better than you can tell me. That right there will shut all that nonsense up. I don't care if you hear Elsa Gundo. When somebody get the whoa, 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 whoa let the birds show me better than you can tell me. Because that's all the language I hear I understand. Yeah. I'm visual. My ears are deaf. I don't hear nothing. But my eyeballs is wide open. Let me see what you're working with. Show me how I'm working. That's right. That's right. Show me what you're working with, right or wrong. That's so it. at the end of the day, that's what counts. That's what counts, right? But yeah, guys, listen, man. It was a pleasure having y'all on tonight because again, y'all guys are young, future of the sport. Y'all, you're not, not rich. You know, y'all don't, you know, y'all like come from this background and things was given to y'all. Y'all have earned it, y'all have came up. Building what y'all have, making the best out of it, and y'all have competed on the biggest stage. You know what I mean? Y'all competed with the big boys out there who've been in the game. A lot of them have been in the game probably at least twice as long as y'all. You know, yeah, and I bet you the person that you lost against probably been in the game probably three times as long as y'all. So again, you know, you always gotta look at that. But as long as you're not in love with that destination, but you're in love with that journey, it really doesn't matter, you know, if you walk away with that trophy or not. Because at the end of the day, I bet y'all guys are proud of how y'all birds perform based on the condition that y'all put them in. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And that's a win. That's an internal trophy. That's what I call them. You know, you got two types of trophies, external and internal. The ones that stay with you for a lifetime is internal. The externals, they come and go. You know what I mean? They come and go. So that's what it is. Yeah, no, yep. we appreciate all the – all the support, Jim, you know, it makes a big difference to all the guys. You know, we got a lot of messages while we were out there, uh, you know, wishing us good luck and, and, and everything. And, uh, you definitely, we do appreciate all the all the love, man. It, it, it makes a difference, you know. Well, I we appreciate sure y'all guys, man. Everybody, you know? Yeah, it was, People it was really cool. Parts of Mexico to come see us. That's awesome, Yeah, we got to get you out. The, the only one I, that was missing was Jim. I know, right? <laughs> Hey, man, I'm telling you, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to come. That's a dream of mine. That's on my bucket list. It ain't too many things on my bucket list that I haven't done or I haven't got. So believe me, I got a pretty good track record of getting the things in my bucket list. <laughs> and it's an easy <laughs> one to check off, man. We will, man. Well, listen, brothers, y'all have a good night. It's a pleasure, man. You know, I will be talking to each other like we always do. Uh, but again, I appreciate y'all guys coming on and sharing y'all story with a lot of guys out there, man. These videos, man, I'm telling you, 
it's just amazing the people that are watching these interviews, man, from all, I mean, literally all over the world. Even if you're looking at, look, looking at comments, there's people from Australia watching these interviews, man. Awesome. Again, the journey to the pit 362 is all about taking this game to the next level. It can only be done with guys like yourself that's willing to come on here, candid, unfiltered information, your own personal experiences. Because, again, man, that stuff inspires people. There's a lot of guys out there that's not 100% sure if they can do what y'all do. But once y'all, once they see that y'all guys done it, then they're like, man, if they can do it, I can do it too. They're not rich. You know that? I mean, they can do it. You know, and just like y'all guys seen that freight train that y'all ran into, y'all know, hey, it's better birds out there, and that's the goal. That freight train that ran us over, that is the goal. And until we get to that, that's the goal. And then when we get to that, our next goal is going to be the next freight train that runs us over. And then that's going to be the next Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's all about, man. That's right. That's right. Well, y'all brothers have a good night, man. Y'all have Alrighty, a good man. night, man. And I'll talk to y'all guys soon. Thank you. I hope everybody enjoy, man. Y'all guys have a good night. All right. All right. Good night. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All righty, guys, that was another awesome interview that we closed that out. You know, I hope y'all guys enjoyed it. I hope y'all went along, man. And, um, you know, again, man, just uh, travel along with these guys doing their experience, man. It was awesome to hear from them. You know, we had some candid conversations about things, again, that, you know, um, uh, that a lot of people don't talk about, you know. But, again, I, I think it's extremely important to have these hard conversations, have this unfiltered information unfiltered opinions based on their experience, you know? And it's not about agreeing or disagreeing because nobody's trying to convince anybody of doing anything. Everybody's just trying to express their opinion. Um, and again, not trying to push it off for anybody else. But it was really great to have these two young guys, man, that's up and coming in the sport as game fowl breeders, having a farm in Mexico um, and being able to go there and compete. And they're again, they're not big timers. They're a small little farm. They got a small little farm between the two farms. You know, they have 300 birds. That, that's not a lot by no means. You know, a lot of guys have 300 birds on one farm. Um, so, again, I hope these guys gave y'all guys some inspiration that it, it can be done. You know, set your dreams high. Put in that work. Don't forget how important that 362 is. And understand you have to enjoy that journey. Don't focus all on the destination of the trophy, you know, because you can win a trophy. But if you haven't enjoyed that journey to get that trophy, that trophy has no value. They come and go. It's two types of trophies, internal trophies, external trophies. The internal trophies are the ones that will stay with you for the rest of your life. The internal trophies, they come and go. So just remember, uh, always enjoy that journey. Y'all guys have a good night. God bless. And I'll talk to y'all or see y'all next uh friday at nine maybe friday and it might, might be next thursday um i'll be on a road tomorrow so i'm look, looking forward to seeing some of y'all guys tomorrow if y'all will i'm at where i'm at um that'd be great if not have a good uh great weekend and good luck to all y'all guys out there have a good night